come to celebrate <clears throat> in our normal chapel service and worship experience. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, open up with every praise and then our scripture will be given <coughs> uh, Dr. Ray Felder of the faculty and location will be given by Dr. James Sims. Our uh, introduction of the speaker will be by our president, Dr. Thad Jones. And then we will come back and uh, uh, give you the rest of our time coming together and praising the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, let me hear you say it one more time. Amen. amen. Uh, I, I thought this side over here. <laughs> Experience a little more jubilance. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Praise his name and honor him for his goodness and his mercy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay, you all know I'm not Kathy. So she has a uh, Lighted me to <laughs> lead the song. So as, as is our custom, y'all stand, the words are on the back. Well, on the inside, brother. Okay. <clears throat> Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise.
the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Yeah, yeah. He gives power to the faint and to them that has no might. He increases strength. Mm -hmm. Even the youth shall faint mm -hmm. and be weary. Yeah. And young men shall utterly fall. Yeah. But they yeah. that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew yeah. their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. Yeah. Yeah. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thus readers to hold a Amen. Yes, Let's bow for prayer. Father God, as we come on this day, we thank you again for just another day's journey. Yes. Day that we haven't seen before and we'll never see again. Mm -hmm. We come praying, Father, this hour for the speaker. As he comes forth, we ask, Father, that you to use him according to thy will. Mm -hmm. Guide his tongue, guide his thoughts, but most of all, Father, guide him. Yes. Help us not to look on him and him not to look on us, mm -hmm. but to all of us to keep our eyes focused on the hill, yes. which cometh our help, because our help cometh from you. Yes. We're so grateful and so thankful that you have been our God and that mm -hmm. you have done so many things for us. Now we ask, Father, to strengthen us as we come this evening to hear your word. Strengthen our hearts, strengthen our minds. Open our ears to what you have to say. Yeah, yeah. We thank you, thank you, thank you for being thank so you. gracious to yeah. us. We thank you for being an awesome God. Mm -hmm. And bless this speaker. Bless each and every one of us. We ask these things in all things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's my honor and pleasure to be able to Good present evening. and introduce, amen, our chapel speaker of this evening, uh, no stranger to Western Baptist Bible College. It has been a great Porter mm -hmm. uh, of the school since he's been here in the city now, and uh, I know it's into the teens now. Fifteen years, Amen. my goodness, time Amen. goes by so fast. But uh, he is none other than the uh, Reverend uh, James uh, Terrence, the pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ there at 3530 Chelsea Drive, and we just thank God for him coming on to the faculty and serving, an awesome teacher, an awesome preacher, an awesome Amen. pastor, an awesome servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. We just are blessed, amen, for him to come and share with us on this evening. Uh, he shared with us in 2006 at our Loyalty and Fellowship Banquet. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then he just shared uh, this past April, amen, as a keynote speaker for our Loyalty and Fellowship banquet. Amen. So again, we're looking forward to hearing from the word to the Lord. And again, he's a great friend to Western Baptist Bible College. Amen. A, a, a great husband. Uh, a, again, a great teacher, a great preacher, and again, a great pastor. Oops. So hear ye him. Amen. I believe that we have a selection. Amen. A soloist. And uh, after this, Miss Solo, it looks like it's going to be Miss Jocelyn Harvey. Amen. After that, the voice you hear from this place will be none other than the Reverend James A. Terrence Jr. Amen. Pastor the Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Why should I be discouraged? Mm -hmm.
<laughs> That's a good thing. God Amen. Bless I'm okay. But you have richly blessed me. And I think that's uh, what should take place when teaching um, is being experienced, both the student and the teacher are being blessed. As the Church of Jesus Christ, uh, we find ourselves at the crossroads of culture as it relates to pluralism. Plethora of philosophies and political mm -hmm. ideologies, relativism, mm. in which we have watered down uh, the authentic truth All right. that is inherent in the gospel. Mm -hmm. A strange and suspicious form of evangelicalism, mm. mm -hmm. I think, that has been hijacked yeah. by Amen. those who might call themselves the yeah. Mm. that preaches uh, a suspicious and not strange salvation yeah. only as a to-come commodity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of understanding salvation as a present reality, yeah. especially offered to people who live at the margins, mm -hmm. we are in the midst of what we may call xenophobic leadership. Mm. Yeah. My Lord. People are fearful yeah. mm. and afraid of others yeah. whose uh, backgrounds are unfamiliar to them. Yeah. Uh, we are afraid of the stranger. We are afraid of the refugee. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we are afraid of persons whose language differs from ours. Uh -huh. and, uh, we are 
reconstructed, if you will, yeah. a society by and for insiders only. Mm -hmm. So let me say again, the Church of Jesus Christ is standing, if you will, or situated at the crossroads of culture. Mm -hmm. Now as an institution and as individuals, I believe that we have to revisit, reclaim, and rehearse our true mission. Mm -hmm. right. Get back to our true message right. that I believe is grounded in the inerrancy of the Word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we are, students and faculty. We're here. We want to rekindle, if I can call it that, a flame that was ignited in us when we first met the Lord. Yeah. Right. And at the same time, as we learn and prepare to equip and lead our local churches, we should be troubled by the reality uh, that many of our congregations are facing. That is a disconnect uh, with the next generation. Mm. Uh, there's cynicism, apathy, frustration that is a part of this new generation. I don't know if millennialism is fair <laughs> in terms of labeling it it as such, but it is a different generation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even believe we can call it the Joshua generation. This mm. is a different generation. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it is a challenge to every pulpit and every pew. It is a threat to every village, every hamlet within our community. We have taken a dangerous detour oh, yeah. from the direction that we've always turned towards. Well. Scripture would say it this way, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, yeah. from whence cometh my help, well, yeah. my help cometh from the Lord. This is the direction that we've always turned towards. Yeah. And as the visible representation of the invisible Christ, speaking of the church, we've always looked to the Lord mm. for discernment. We've always looked to the Lord for direction. And then we have moved into action on his behalf. I submit to you that the culture in which you and I are trying to minister today is looking in every direction other than up. Now on tonight, I also believe that we ought to encourage ourselves, educate ourselves. That's why we're here at Western Bible College. Edify ourselves because we need more energy. Uh, and we need more enthusiasm to serve the present age. Right. Right. In the words of him, that is what? Our calling to fulfill. Yeah. So I think we have to turn our eyes toward what is in front of us, uh, to turn our eyes toward what is outside of us, hear me now, to turn our attention to what is beyond us and see that there's a field out there, the scripture would say, this light, field that is ready to be harvested. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Now, in that field, uh, there may well be the atheist, uh, the rebel is in that field, the racist is in that field, the lost is in that field, the confused somewhere mm -hmm. out in that field that needs to be harvested, yeah. the poor, uh, the hostile, the angry, the abused, the forgotten, they are in that field that yeah. we need to harvest. The weak, the unlearned, the yeah, yeah. unchurched, yeah. the wounded, they are yeah. in that field mm -hmm. that we need to harvest. The weary, the dirty, yeah. the damned, the devilish, yeah. they are all in that field. Yes, sir. And, and, and one of the things that we should guard against is how we use labels. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for us, and when I say us, those of us who are churched, and I don't know, we got to work on what does that mean. <laughs> but we have used labels or designations, and they can mislead us right, right. into thinking ourselves to be above these other people, groups in society. Yeah. When in fact, these are the very people to whom that you and I have been called to minister to and reach out to. Yeah. So the shift uh, that is upon the church at the crossroads of culture is to cease from looking inwardly yeah. mm. and to now focus outwardly. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Our prayer, I know it's my prayer, is that the Almighty God 
will send us more servants and fewer celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. That. Yeah. Over and against all of our creeds and our covenants and constitutions, and my students know what I mean when I say that, yeah. there should be this undying commitment to simply do what the Lord has called us to all do, right. to be the church, yeah. Yeah. to be the voice that cries out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so, I know you're probably saying, I thought he was going to preach. This is about as good as I have for you tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, from the pen of an outsider, mm -hmm. I think we have a good record and a reminder of who we are yeah. and what we're called to do. And that's Luke, the fourth chapter, uh -huh. and the 16th through the 21st verse. Now, mind you, I said it's from the pen of an outsider mm -hmm. who is one of the only Gentile writers that we have in the right, New Testament. Right. But he records this interesting pericope that takes place in the old city. And he came to Nazareth, yeah. right, where he had been brought up. This is how the 16th verse opens up. And as his custom was, he yeah. went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Right. Stood up for to read. The 17th verse says, and there he delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, listen now, how Luke sets it down, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised. And here's the 19th verse. To preach yeah. the yeah. acceptable year yeah. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That may really be where the sermonic spotlight ought to shine. Uh -huh. The 20th verse says he closed the book. Yeah. Gave it to the minister and he sat down. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of all of them yeah. were in the synagogue fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he began to say to them, and here it is, this day yeah. is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This right. is Luke 4, wow. verses 16 through 21. And, and it's on, let's just say, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, in the synagogue uh -huh. that Jesus uh, stands to read the scripture, yeah. uh, and then he sits down to preach it. Okay. And as he sits down to preach the message, uh, the message is perceived by the audience as being rather salty. Mm. Yeah. So how about we say Jesus' first sermon in his hometown was a salty sermon. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's a message for all of us who dare try to preach on Sunday morning. Yeah that perhaps this is what our church needs every once in a game mm -hmm. are some salty servants. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because too many sweets are not good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that for another, another sermon. But within his first salty sermon, I'm going to keep calling it that, were two fundamental points. Mm -hmm. One, Jesus clarifies, this is my mission. Okay. And secondly, Jesus clarifies, this is my mission message. Okay. I think those are the two fundamental points that are driven home in verses 16 through 21. And if, listen, if we aren't clear on these two, talking about the church, if we are not clear on the mission, and if we are not clear on the message, then we are no different than any other human organization mm. in the world today. What distinguishes the church from every other human organization is our mission and our message. It is yeah. not the same as any other uh, benevolent, uh, well-meaning yes, uh, organization. Yes, Our history yes, yes. as church is marked by saints that knew what they were here to do. Mm -hmm. right. uh, part of our time at West Bible College is so that when we leave here, we, we'll know why we're here, yeah, right. and we'll know what we're here to do, yeah. and we'll be able to adequately communicate Mm -hmm. uh, to the people that we've been charged to teach and to train. I'm almost done. God's church doesn't necessarily have a mission in the world. Mm -hmm. God's mission in the world has a church. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me say that again. Okay. God's church doesn't necessarily have a mission in the world. God's mission in the world ought to have the church. Right. The church is larger mm -hmm. than the mission is larger than the church. Right. So the church doesn't have ownership on the mission. The mission belongs to God. Yeah. And the church has not been authorized to yeah. create the mission. 
Right. They ought to call that uh, blasphemy. Yeah. Mm. Now, how, how dare the church uh, sit around and try to come up with the mission mm. for uh, something that it does not own? The church yeah. belongs to God. Right. So God has already given the church the mission. Mm -hmm. uh, the response of the church is to obey and to do. Right, right, uh, right. The Latin would say missio Dei, the mission, the mission of God, missio Dei, the mission of God that overwhelms and encapsulates all that we are here to say and do, the missio Dei, the missio Dei. Yeah. And let's, let me just push just a little bit to suggest that this mission of God transcends the church as an institution, yeah. that, that God is working in some places that we are unaware. Mm. That, that, that God ain't working exclusively through through the church only. That there's some other places, other crevices and corners within creation uh, that God is using to yeah. fulfill His own plan, yeah. His own purpose. Right. That that kind of makes us uncomfortable because we like to think that yeah. God is only using yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Well, this missio day business is also about a change of mind. A change of mindset from programs to people, mm. from demographics to discernment, yeah. from models to missions, from yeah. attractional church yeah. to yeah. incarnational yeah. church, from yeah. uniformity to diversity, from professional people to passionate people, from seats to sending people, from yeah. decisions to discipling people, from, from uh, members yeah. to yeah. ministers, yeah. from monuments to movements. Yeah. Uh, tap somebody, I know that's Sunday morning, but y'all ask me to talk. I, I, it's the only way I know how to do it. And, and, and just ask somebody, tell somebody, it's a change of mind. It's a change of mind. Yeah. The missio day, God's mission sends us out uh, yeah. with heaven's stamp of approval. God sends us out unto the poor, yeah. uh, unto the brokenhearted, unto yeah. the captive, unto the blind, unto the bruised, yeah. and he, we are to do it until he comes again. Yeah. At the heart of the Missio Dei, the mission of God, is freedom. It is liberty, both in the now and in the to come, for those who are on the outside, to those who are unlearned, to those who are unfamiliar with the rituals and the rules and the regulations of institutional church, is this mission that says, come on in, you're included, and you don't have to live at the margins of everything that matters. So Luke says that when Jesus preaches this salt to serve, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. And listen to what Luke says. As anointed me, 18 verse, to preach the gospel, and Luke says, to the poor. Yeah. And I love the way Luke sets it down. He, he doesn't fix it like maybe the others who would say poor in spirit. No, yeah. Luke will have none of the poor in spirit. Luke says, the poor. Yeah. And by it, he means the economically disadvantaged, the people yeah. who have limited access to resources and wealth yeah. and power and advancement. Jesus says, I have come to proclaim good news. Yeah. Uh, so he's clear on his, his mission. Let me, let me quickly cut across the grass. He is also clear on his message. Mm -hmm. And here it is, to preach yeah. the acceptable year of the Lord. Oh, right. My God, what are we to make up? What is this business of acceptable year, year of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Well, some versions would call it the year of the Lord's favor. That's how some would say it now. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament mind would say it is the year of Jubilee. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you think of the whole concept grounded in the Hebrew Bible of Jubilee, it is a year of restoration. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jubilee is about reconciliation. Yeah. 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 Shoot, y'all gonna make me get a Sunday morning feeling in here on Tuesday night. It, it, it's about, Jubilee is about restoration. Yeah. It's about redemption. The year in which the excluded yeah. are now included. Yeah. 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 Jubilee. You see, yeah. it's when the outsiders yeah. have been brought inside. Yeah. So it's Jubilee. All debts are forgiven. Yeah. And, and all property is restored yeah. back to its rightful ownership. Yeah. And, and all who are enslaved yeah. are now set free. Yeah. Jesus said, preach that. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, that's the best. Yeah. 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 And, and Lord, have 
mercy. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm the, the, the church then must preach jubilee. Yeah. And if we're going to preach jubilee, then the church is obligated to work towards jubilee. Yeah. I mean, you can't preach reconciliation and oh. restoration if you ain't going to work towards it. Oh. Yeah. And, and, and to not do so is to perpetuate hypocrisy. Yeah. So the church must preach jubilee and work towards jubilee yeah. and pursue jubilee. Yeah. The slate is white king. All sins are forgiven. Mm. Now, brothers and sisters, that sounds good. But here's the truth. Preaching the acceptable year of the Lord will get you in trouble. Mm. <laughs> Mm. And this is why we need more servants than celebrities. Quickly, listen, if you read through the rest of this text, when you go home, you, you'll discover they tried to throw Jesus off the cliff. Yeah. Yes, they did. They tried to lay hands on him and throw him off the cliff. Yes, they did. And, and, and because the gospel is a disturber and an agitation to oppressive regimes and institutions, they tried to throw Jesus off the cliff. Yeah, yeah. Don't ever expect yeah. when you preach the acceptable year of the Lord yeah. uh, that you will be received oh. with all the honor yeah. mm -hmm. and accolade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They tried to throw him off the cliff. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I said, they tried. Yeah. Yeah. Look at someone and say, wake up, he's almost done. I said, they tried. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But he had peculiar power with him. Yeah. So when they tried to lay hands on him, he walked right through them. Yeah. If you're going to preach jubilee, you need peculiar power. Yeah. And he went right through them because Christ had to get to another place. Yeah. He wasn't trying to get to the cliff. He had to get to the cross. Yeah. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, his work couldn't be in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elijah did my Savior mm -hmm. uh, and did my sovereign die. Uh, mm -hmm. Would he devote that same ring for, for such, such a word as I? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we reflect upon it yeah. at the cross. Yeah, uh, yeah. At the cross. Yeah. Where I first yeah. saw the yeah. and the burdens. It was there. It was there. All right. All right. By faith, yeah. mm. I received oh, my sight. And now, oh, happy. And now, and now, now I am happy. Oh, 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 yes. oh yes. 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 Praise his holy name. You know, I use that, uh, Pastor Terrence, as one of my evangelism type of uh, scriptures uh, where it talks about how that when Jesus, as it was his custom to come into the city, amen, he always found himself, amen, heading to the synagogue yeah. on the Sabbath day. Yes, he did. And for all those that say, well, uh, I'm going to stay at home, uh, but I love Jesus, uh, I'm going to stay and do this, uh, but I want to be like Jesus. Well, that's a great opening for me. For I said, well, as it was for Jesus, it was his custom. Mm -hmm. Amen. To be, on, to be in church on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> on the yeah. day of worship. Amen. Amen. Jesus had a mission and a message. Amen. And I just want to remind you that uh, on next Tuesday will be our annual Thanksgiving convocation. Uh, and that's where that you want to invite your friends, your family, your spouses. Everyone's invited on our annual Thanksgiving convocation. 
the Reverend B.G. Roberson, the pastor of the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church of Jesus Christ, is going to be uh, our chapel speaker, our convocation speaker on next Tuesday. Uh, and here's the great thing. We're going to feed you real good. Amen. Amen. And uh, it, it'll be a, a real dinner. And so we're looking forward to that. Awesome message always, Pastor Terrence. Amen. 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 We're going to ask if our dean would come forward, following our dean, we're going to ask for Dr. Bainham to come forward and, and give remarks, and then we're going to ask for our chapel speaker on the night to come and give us a benediction. One is, please, we're asking for all of the students to meet us here on Saturday, this, this coming Saturday, 1030, uh, for our student association meeting. You all know that we have not met for a couple of months, and so we will be resuming our meetings on this Saturday, right here, and we will probably be in room 125, which is that room right, right there the larger room. So please come out. Uh, we do have uh, some information to share uh, with you. And Jocelyn has, uh, as you all know, she is serving in the leadership role uh, right now for that. And um, she has some information that she wants to share as well too. Uh, and the second thing that I want to say is that we need to uh, keep Dr. Counts uh, in our prayers. As you all know, Kathy is not here. Um, tonight, and there uh, it was a situation with Dr. Counts, and so we do want to uh, pray. She sh uh, shared with me that he um, had an extremely high fever, and we all know that sometimes that indicates an infection somewhere. So let's pray for Dr. Counts, uh, and that's not only for Dr. Counts, but also for Kathy, uh, because Kathy um, has has a is living out there with him. And so she is uh, his caretaker. And we want to also pray for the Count's family. Just lift them up. All right? Uh, and I know you all will do that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And my remarks are going to be this. Bow your heads with me. Eternal God, our Dean has asked us to pray. Mm -hmm. For Dr. Counts. And so, Lord, we want to be a people yes. whose hearts reach up to you to reach down to our friend and brother. And we ask you, Lord, if you will, touch his body. Yes. Whatever is needed, bring his body back to a place where he can call us and share with us. I pray for Kathy, Lord, that you will give her the kind of strength yes. uh, to be a caretaker and a caregiver. But not only for that, my Father, but give them the assurance that God loves us all and will take care of us all. Yes. And then, Lord, we pray your blessings, your rich blessings, will also be upon our speaker, Dr. Terrence, yes. in a very special kind of way. And may his word reach out into the community and cause a change that will affect the lives of those who walk with God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 May we stand together. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. May he give thee his protection, his 
provision yeah. mm. and his peace hence now and forevermore and all the people said Amen. If you all want to say hi to Dr. Counts and to Kathy, you're on you are on the, the screen. Hi. Hi Papa. Love you. All right. Hello, Dr. Counts. Hi Kathy. Okay. Hi, Dr. Counts. Hi, Kathy. God bless. Dr. Counts, she sure is nice. How you doing? God bless you. We're praying for you. You'll be encouraged. Bye-bye. You want to say something to Dr. Dr. Counts, Jocelyn? She got you on the camera. Hi, Dr. Counts. How my little sunshine? All right. She sure is nice.